Okay, so good morning everyone. Um, in this video, we'll be talking about how to construct a probability distribution. We have here an example of tossing two coins. So the first step that you will be doing is to list down the possible outcomes, which will be denoted by um, a capital letter S, and that denotes a sample space. When we say sample space, these are the possible or the set of all the possible values. Now, when we toss two coins, the possible values could be head, 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 tail, tail, head, or tail, tail. After taking the sample space, you will then get the values of your random variable x. So in this particular example, our random variable x denotes um, the number of tails in every outcome. Okay, so again, x here denotes the number of tails in every outcome. Number of tails. All right, so to get the possible values of our random variable, we will count the number of tails in each outcome. And here we have zero tail. Here we have one tail. Here we have one tail also. And here we have two tails. So this gives us the values of our random variable x or the number of tails are zero, one and two all right so we'll be putting that one in our table on the first column we have here the numbers or the values of our um, random variable x we have zero one and two on the second column this will be your frequency or the number of occurrence the frequency of having no tail here is 1. So it only exists once. Next, the frequency of having one tail we have here 2 since it occurs twice. And head tail, one tail. And tail head, one tail. So the total is 2. Next, the frequency of having two tails. It also occurred once only, so we will be having here 1. Now, let's have the total frequency. Alright, so for your total frequency, all you have to do is to add all the frequencies and every outcome. We have 1 plus 2 plus 1, that is 4. So, this will be your frequency distribution. After that, you will get the probability in every outcome so to do that we just have the frequency in each outcome divided by the total frequency let's have one divided by the total frequency that's four so we have one fourth all right or if you wanted it in a decimal form or a percentage form you can also convert that one so this will be 0 0.25. Next, we have 2 divided by 4. That's 1 half. All right, simplifying that. Or we can have 0 0.5 or 0 0.50. Next, 1 divided by 4. Still, that is 1 fourth or 0 0.25. Now let's add all the probabilities in each outcome we have one fourth one half plus one fourth so that is one it is important to add um all the probabilities in each outcome because we need um to make sure that the sum of it is one remember that the highest probability is one and the lowest is zero so now we'll be making our probability distribution all right so let's write prob dist that's probability distribution on the first row we have here the values of our random variable x that is zero one and 
2. On the second row, we have here the probabilities in each outcome. So the probability of having 0, that's 0.25. 1, that's 0 0.50. Well, let's write down 0.50 para uniform sila. And we have here 2. That's 0.25 also. So after making your probability distribution, you will now be making the probability histogram. We can use Excel in constructing our probability histogram. Alright, so on the first um, column, these are the values of your random variable x. The second column, these are the probabilities of your random variable x. So, center lang sa nato ni sila duha. Now, the values of our random variable x in our example are 0, 1, and 2. And its corresponding probability are 0 0.25, 0 0.50, and 0 0.25. So if you will be reading the histogram, if you want it in, in percentage form, you can just highlight that one and click percent. Right? Now after doing that, we will be highlighting the second column. Click insert the recommended charts. You choose the clustered column. And then we have here the chart design. You choose what you want. And then after that one, you will be remain, renaming all of this. So on top, you have the probability histogram or depending on what's the title of your um, probability histogram. And then after that one, um, let's select first the layout. Um, we will be selecting this since we are making a histogram. There should be no space between all the bars, all right? Now on the y-axis, these are your probabilities. And then on the x-axis, these are your random variable x. But take note, on the x-axis, um, it does not follow the intended numbers or the intended values that we want. So we'll go to select data, edit, and then click and drag these values. All right. So this will be your probability histogram. Again, we'll, we're talking about the number of fails in every outcome. So let's read the probability histogram. The probability or the chance of having no tail is at 25%. The chance or the probability of having one tail is at 50%. And the probability of having two tails is at 25%. So this is how you will be making a probability histogram or a probability distribution. If you do have questions or suggestions, feel free to comment down below. Thank you.